Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas Episcopal Church via various homes throughout the Tampa Bay area. Today is the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord and we are celebrating a service of anti-communion, anti meaning before, so the parts of the liturgy that lead up to uh, what would normally be our communion. I'm the Reverend Ann Dieterle, the Assistant Rector, and good morning to you again. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and in peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first chapter, verse 6. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, beginning at the fourth chapter, verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As I mentioned uh, in the greeting before we formally started this uh, service of anti-communion, today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. Uh, the actual day was Thursday, but as it's a principal feast of the church, we're able to uh, transfer it to the Sunday following since we did not celebrate it then. If you don't know what this event means, you probably picked up the themes from the Collect of the Day and from the readings. Today we commemorate the uh, time when Jesus is uh, lifted up to heaven by God. Um, it's an event that effectively ends the bodily presence that he has on earth, you know, that part of his ministry and mission, and also begins to inaugurate the apostolic mission of those first disciples. Um, they're going to have to wait another 10 days for the Feast of Pentecost for the power to come from the Holy Spirit from on high, uh, but this is a beginning of sorts. There are several points in our weekly worship where we mention or proclaim and pray about Jesus's ascension. In the Nicene Creed, which we'll do in just a moment, um, we proclaim as a church that we believe he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. In times when we were gathering together to celebrate communion, if we were doing Eucharistic prayer A, a part of that prayer we pr uh, say, we remember his death and proclaim his resurrection and ascension. Um, and we do this as we offer back the gifts of bread and wine that God has given to us for the sake of celebrating that communion and for the sake of our spiritual worship and nourishment. As I think about this particular event, um, in addition to thinking of those occasions where we pray about it, uh, it occurs to me that there are several things that are happening um, kind of before the event and as, as it occurs. Um, and there are three things that I want to I want to mention today. The first is that Jesus does a lot of teaching in his post-resurrection appearances. Uh, he does a lot of eating too, actually, um, something that uh, someone who thinks with their stomach a lot will take note of. Um, but he says that his point is to open their minds, open the minds of the disciples to his point or his part in salvation history uh, so that they can know their part in, his, in the ongoing mission of God in the world. I recall uh, something that Franciscan friar Richard Rohr wrote some time ago where he says that the core work of all spirituality, uh, and he's really uh, particular to note that it is work is to have three spaces opened within us all at the same time, our opinionated mind, our closed down heart, and our defensive and defended body. But Jesus's intention is to open their minds and one imagines the heart and the body as well. Um, if not in this single encounter, then in the entire movement of events after the resurrection leading up to Pentecost. In what ways do our minds need opening to Jesus' teaching? Or is it our heart that needs awakening? Or our body that needs healing? I don't know about you, but I notice that certain themes and things 
continue to come up in my life repeatedly. It's like a broken record of sorts. Um, and what I've come to interpret that is, as is that there's a lesson to learn that I have not yet learned. Um, and so the opportunity to learn it is continuously presented to me um, so that I can then grow. So I ask you to consider that. What is something in your life that continues to come up for you? A consistent theme, um, something that seems to always happen to you. Could it be that there's a teaching of Jesus that Jesus wants to open your mind to? Uh, could it be that there's something about your heart that is closed down about that or something in your body that needs to heal? You may have heard, and I'm no doctor and I'm no trained psychiatrist or psychologist, but our bodies store memories. Um, you may recall something that's happened to you and you feel it somewhere in your body or you tense up. Um, and so I think that's what Richard Rohr means by our defensive and defended bodies. That we are given opportunities um, as Jesus uh, interacts with us and as we pray to open our minds, our hearts, and our bodies. So what does that mean for you? Another thing I noticed is that similar to Matthew's gospel, there's a great commission in Luke's gospel as well. It took me a long time to notice this. So in addition to opening their minds, Jesus says, that he comes to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations. Actually, he's asking his disciples to do this. Um, and he says to them, be witnesses of these things. So it's expansive in its scope. Go to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And we live in a climate of increasing diversity, but uh, I think measurably decreasing tolerance. So it's worth noting that this is an inclusive, not an exclusive statement. In the time of those first disciples, the Gentiles were considered others, uh, non-Jews were considered others, but they are included in this invitation to repentance and forgiveness of sins. So the disciples are told that these things are to be proclaimed to all in his name. Another expression that I've heard used in an exclusionary way, in other words, if you haven't engaged in repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name, you're probably going to the bad place. Uh, potentially someone you know is going to the bad place. I was um, involved with, in a tangential kind of way, with a ministry in college where um, the participants strongly encouraged us, us and me to say a very specific prayer in order to secure my salvation. And this prayer, you had to get it word perfect. You couldn't flub a word um, as I've done several times uh, in this recording. Um, but that seemed really strangely picky to me for a God of grace and mercy. But another way to translate that phrase in my name is upon my authority, which actually fits better in a context of a commissioning. So go forth in my authority or upon my authority to do these things. I'm thinking now about uh, what Reverend Sonia said last week in her sermon where St. Paul um, goes to the people of Athens, and he's not on a pulpit, you know, both saying believe or burn. Um, he's there and lifting up their needs to God um, so that in a way that they can hear it, hopefully, and he's amongst them, he's with them. And that's Jesus's approach too, and seems to me to be the approach that he's telling his disciples to take here. What does it mean to be a witness to the resurrection, to be a witness to repentance and forgiveness of sins, uh, even in these strange times where being with people means something very different. How can you be a witness to the resurrection right now? Another thing about this particular commission where Jesus talks about the forgiveness of sins is that forgiveness has a, a a sense to it that means deliverance from captivity. And it, you can see where that might be used in regards to personal sin. Um, you know, Jesus saved me from my personal moral failing, so I don't go to the bad place. But there's a collective societal sense to it as well. And it includes um, deliverance from captivity to those who are victims of oppression and injustice. Jesus does not only care 
about what we are doing in our own lives. Jesus cares very deeply for those who are um, the least of these in our society. We see that again and again um, come up in the Gospels. And so we have to be about that as disciples as well as we go forth proclaiming uh, repentance from sin and deliverance. It's especially notable in these time, in this time of the pandemic, that the effects of it are hitting communities of color and poor communities in a, a more profound way than they are. It's hitting other communities. It's also worth noting the impact that it's having on the environment, which is a good thing. Um, it's eliminating or at least decreasing air pollution um, and greenhouse gas emissions. I know that's those are things that have become politicized, but um, to me, they're just spiritual realities where Jesus longs uh, for those who are captive to be delivered, and we pray that any number of places, but also longs for this earth to be a place that all God's creatures can live and thrive and be healthy and happy. A third theme, and or the last thing that I want to talk about today is that the Ascension, one of the things that it means to me is that we have to let God be God so that we can be fully human. And Jesus is carried into heaven. You know, this isn't an action that Jesus does to himself or by himself. It's something that God does for him and to him. But Jesus also is not a completely passive participant to this event either. Uh, we're told that he withdrew from them. In other words, he has to let them go. You know, he has to let go of his friends. He has to let go of this mission that he has been working for for three years. Um, so it's a combination of um, action and surrender that Jesus is offering to his, this, the first disciples when he says, you know, go and wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so he's also inviting us to that same thing surrender and action. You know, as the disciples are waiting to be clothed with power from on high, um, that word power is significant to me. Uh, the Greek word is dunamis, uh, which is the word from which we get our word from dynamite. So this isn't something kind of timid or tentative. This is forceful. And sometimes I have to remind myself of that, right? This is not um, kind of something a little soft-spoken or timid that we are um, getting in ourselves. And it's not super willpower either. It's a power that is given to us um, from God, and it works on us in a way that it transforms us. It's hard for me sometimes to do my part only and let God be God. Um, I'm thinking of a quote uh, someone once said, you know, the Easter season a time is a time when we ask ourselves, do we really believe all this stuff? And if the answer is yes, why do we live this way? You know, it's easy to speak the words and pray the prayers. It's another thing to actually practice a way of life. And yet Jesus being lifted into heaven is the same moment that he is blessing the disciples. He chooses and chose to leave it to them, the same ones who were capable in one breath of great declarations of faith and inspired declarations of faith, and in the other moment, um, bumbling it so badly that he calls one of them Satan. Jesus chose to leave his mission to those disciples, and he also chooses us this church that is capable of great acts of faith in one moment, but also capable of making terrible mistakes. It's this church that Jesus trusts his mission to. And 2,000 years later, nothing has changed about that. The church has been through a lot. The church, she, we, have done some pretty amazing things, some pretty inspired acts of faith, and we're capable of that every day. And we've made some mistakes too. And she's still doing God's work. The church is still doing God's work. And we have to remember that God is God um, and we have our own small part to do. 
Uh, we're trusted with a part of the mission, but it is God who gives us God's blessing and God's power from on high. It's enough for us to bless God through the way that we live our lives. Amen. Good morning, St. Thomas youth and families. I hope that you all are well this week. This morning as we celebrate the seventh Sunday in Easter and the Sunday after Jesus' ascension, we hear from the gospel according to Luke. Jesus lifts up his hands and blesses his disciples. As Jesus blessed them, he was lifted up to heaven. The disciples worshiped Jesus, they were filled with great joy, and they went to their temples blessing God. This morning, while we aren't able to worship in St. Thomas or place our deans in the garden and share dinner together on Wednesday evenings, it is important for us to know that just as the disciples were blessed, each one of us are too. As the disciples worshiped, we will continue to do so from our homes, whether we brush our hair or not that day. We will be filled with joyfulness and someday we will gather again in St. Thomas for worship, fellowship, and sardines. This morning, I'd like to close with sharing a prayer from a book called Call on Me. I feel the sunshine on my face and the warmth of your love that surrounds me. The beating of my heart and the expansion of my lungs remind me of the life within me. With you, God, I live and move and have my being. In the stillness of my being and the movement of my body, I'm amazed at how alive I am. My thoughts and memories connect my past and present as I anticipate the future. With you, God, I live and move and have my being. Your hand is always on my shoulder. With you, God, I live and move and have my being. Amen. Have a great week. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In the power of resurrection, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole bright earth, so lovingly created, yet so compassionately redeemed, that it may speak again of the glory and majesty of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and peoples of the earth, to whom God shows no partiality, that all may be transformed by mercy to live together in hope. For those in our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for all members of the Anglican communion around the world. For the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby, 
and all primates and bishops, for members of the Anglican Consultative Council, for the Secretary General, the Most Reverend Dr. Josiah, I do we fear him, for the staff at the Anglican Communion Office in London and the UN offices in Geneva and New York, and our diocesan cycle of prayer, St. George's, Bradenton, St. Giles, Pinellas Park, St. Hilary's, Fort Myers, St. John James, Port Charlotte, St. James House of Prayer, Tampa, and for our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church, whose life is hid with Christ in God, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Ryan and Anne, our priests, Martha, our deacon, Sonia, our Canterbury chaplain, and Diana, our seminarian, that in all its diversity, witness may be made to one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in high places of authority and living into the resurrection of life, that they may be led to govern with equity and justice, bringing life to those in the shadow of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized and given the garments of light, that they with the whole church may be witnesses to the gospel in daily life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Michelle Badger, Michelle Jennings, and Kai Tomlin, that they may grow in grace as they grow in years. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all captives, prisoners, and those confirmed to die, with whom the Holy One shares suffering and abandonment, that they may find strength, freedom, and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all military personnel, for a safe deployment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in mind, body, or soul, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, that they may be comforted. For Mark, Winifred, Maggie, John, David, Vaughn, Doris, Gail, Marsha, Esther, Rose, Al, Robert, Jessica, Faye, Lindsay, Shirley, Taylor, John, Joe, Kathy, Lynn, Anne, Mary, Michael, Amelia, Charlotte, Zachary, and Joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick with COVID-19, for their friends and family, especially those unable to be with them, for first responders, nurses, doctors, and all medical personnel, and that this pandemic may be lifted from us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and all who grieve, that in Christ, who triumphs over death, they may find light perpetual and blessed assurance, especially for Judy Barker, wife of Jeff Barker. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered in this assembly, that we, like Peter and John, may see the tomb empty and joyfully believing, walk in newness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the risen presence of our Lord, we commend all for whom we pray and ourselves to Christ, to whom we give laud and praise 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Alleluia. Well, good morning, friends from near and far. Welcome to St. Thomas's virtual worship for this Sunday, the Sunday after the Ascension. My name is Father Ryan Whitley, and I am the rector of St. Thomas. It is my pleasure to worship with you today, even if only virtually. We have a number of announcements that we want to make today to let you know of all the different ways that you can connect for faith opportunities, for worship opportunities, for social opportunities, and for study opportunities in the coming week. At the conclusion of this service at 10 o'clock a.m., for St. Thomas parishioners, we will offer a virtual coffee half hour on Zoom. Hopefully it'll work this week. The details for that uh, Zoom conference can be found in the draft. In the coming weeks, we offer a variety of opportunities for morning and evening prayer. Monday through Friday, we have morning prayer on Facebook Live at 9 a.m. Evening prayer is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 5.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Compline is Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live as well. We have a couple of study opportunities that you may want to avail yourselves of. On Wednesday morning, the men's Bible study will continue their exploration of the post-biblical document, the first letter of Clement to the Corinthians. We'll be reading this week chapters 13 through 15. That men's Bible study meets on Wednesday morning on Zoom at 8 a.m. Again, details are in the draft. The Women of the Word will also meet via Zoom this Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Details on that Zoom conference are in the draft. Wednesday night, our adult formation class is taking a two-week break, and we will resume that adult formation class in two weeks with a book study by the Reverend Anne, and the book is called Yes to Life and Everything by Viktor Frankl. Details about how you can order your own copy are in the draft. Earlier this week, I sent out a special video message that I hope you all got. Hopefully by now, if you haven't seen it, you can go to our YouTube page and view it there about how St. Thomas is operating during this time of pandemic and how we hope to operate in the future. I commend that video message to you, friends, as I hope that it answers many questions that you have. I long to return to our sanctuary worship with each and every one of you and I hope to get there very soon, but we want to do nothing that puts anyone in danger. Again, God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday morning virtual worship, and we will see you very soon. God loves you, and so do I.
now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.